Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 87 of the Showbound Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Raskin, here, as always, with Ethan Cardwell. And cards rocking the greasy Movember stash. How's it going, man? Yeah, man, it's good. But, uh, yeah, you got to support uh, the cause and hop in on the uh, mustache trend. And it's a funny story. So, like, I obviously, everyone knows, like, I got pretty blonde. Like, I, I guess I got dirty blonde hair, but, like, all my facial hair, like, or my mustache hair is, like, it's pretty blonde. Um, so I got to throw a little just for men in there if I want to, uh, if I want my mustache to show up. So I was dying it with my girlfriend, and uh, she she told me, she's like, take it off. And I was watching the Cowboys game, and uh, I'm like, no, like, I need to see this play happen. And uh, so, like, it was like okay maybe like an extra minute or so but then i take it off i'm like oh my god that's a little bit darker than i wanted but you know what i've been washing it out it's sort of sort of fading back to my regular color but uh for right now i'm a little bit more greasier than normal so hopefully in a few days it'll fade down and uh i'll be dialed back in but you know what it's all good fun the boys get a kick out of it so how about you you growing something here like what do you got i see you got a full beard like goatee going on nah nothing nothing for the stash like the guys are kind of giving it to me a bit. Like I, I'm still, I still support Movember, and you can support uh, men's men's health with uh, Manscaped, by the way, which we can talk about in a bit. But um, I'm just, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like, it, I feel like it's different when you're not playing hockey. Like all the players do stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm still doing like meetings and stuff, and like people look at me funny if I if I have a mustache, even if Movember, maybe not, but you know, but uh, I don't know. I'm I don't I don't really have anything going on. Is that weird? No, nah, like I feel like it's it's professional to keep it like tight, keep keep yourself looking good. Like I mean, yeah, like uh, I bet you have, like a bunch of people with like huge mustaches. Like if, if they're in like a big like law firm in New York or something, and they got something like that going on, people are like eh. I don't know, but I don't know the policy, so I don't. I wouldn't consider it weird. No. Okay, and um, I wanted to talk about it's uh it's Wednesday as we record this, a late episode by a day because you played the the school day game in Hamilton this morning and you guys were on the road last night and stuff when we normally record. So let, let's hear about that. I, I saw the score. I saw you had a beautiful goal, but how was the game and the, and the waking up in the morning for that and, and everything? Yeah, it was definitely a little weird. Like it felt like, and I, we have so many young listeners. So um, like it felt like a minor hockey tournament again. And, and uh, it was actually kind of fun, you know, like you go in the hotel the night before I, I said the only thing that was missing i said the boy should have broke out some mini sticks in the hallway last oh, night yeah. uh, but uh no it was uh it was good fun man like obviously not the outcome we wanted to lose 2-1 in hamilton but like the crowd and like having the kids there like obviously anytime you can play in front of a bunch of kids who are like wanting to become like the next players in that league and stuff and inspire them and give them like something to watch and and they're so loud you know kids can scream so the uh the building was rocking and and everything like that but like i said yeah we lost two on yeah and uh, i mean they're not gonna win them all but uh definitely a, a tough one for us but i know we wanted to talk a little bit about like what like a road trip might look like in the ohl for like people who may not understand that yet and i'm like obviously most hockey teams professional u sports so you guys in brock and stuff do the similar thing and we'll, we'll talk about thunder bay in a little bit but um yeah, so like we basically, what we do yesterday is we we have a workout, we do a skate, and then we hop on the bus, get down to Hamilton at like about five o'clock, unpack our bags at the rink so everything's ready for the morning time, get all of our gear washed and everything like that, and and then we go back to the hotel, rest a little bit, and then have a team meal together, uh, which was awesome by the way. Went to like this unbelievable like a little like Italian place in Stony Creek the people are so friendly and everything. They even gave us gelato for dessert and stuff like that. So it was an absolute treat there. Um, and then, yeah, go back to the hotel and it, you go to bed a little bit earlier when you got to wake up at seven o'clock and play a hockey game the next day. But yeah, just unwind with the guys a little bit and uh, shut her down and bright and early this morning. And we had a beautiful meal actually brought in uh, to the hotel. We ate as a team in the, in the ballroom. And then next thing you know, you load up the, the troops on the bus and, uh, kick it on over to the arena and then from there just a regular game day but uh fast forwarded things a little bit <laughs> into the morning time but uh it, it was it was a good experience man like i've never played a school day game i haven't played a game at 10 30 in the morning for five <laughs> or six years now so 
it, it was definitely a little weird at first, but uh, once you're in the rink and stuff, I, I, I think you kind of lose track of time anyway. Yeah, man. I, I've experienced a few school day games. I When I was in Barrie, we did the one in Hamilton as well. And with Brock, U of T has the one school day game. I think they get like 3,000 kids and the rink's smaller. So it's like pretty loud. Like they, the thing is with the kids is they just, they scream so loud and constantly. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely understand that. But yeah, it's, it's weird getting up uh, in the morning for a game like that. And, you know, pregame meals, routines, like things are all different. So yeah. Um, let's let's talk about some cold stuff while we're on it before we kind of move forward and and i know obviously things in barry like the as far as the record's been going lately like the team's struggling a bit like is there anything you want to talk about or like how the game's been going the last couple weekends and stuff like that yeah like i mean i've done actually like a few interviews and just like talked about like our play and stuff and like it's not, it's not far off and like you know like you never go into a game and not try your best to win. So like, obviously that's never an issue. My goal is, is main focus to win the game. And like, like you said, we've, we've been getting a little bit on the other side of things a little bit too much lately, but it's only a matter of time. We just have to keep doing like our thing. Right. Like I feel like as a hockey team, I feel like you have to work individually on your like job. And I feel like if everybody does their individual job, that's when a team starts to like click as well as it can. Like it's like a car. Obviously it's not working if like one machine's not working. So I feel like you get every, every part working and it's going and going, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're definitely making sense. And before I even continue, I also want to say um, that we're having a little internet troubles today on this podcast if you if the listeners haven't noticed i don't know if they have or haven't it depends how good of a job i do editing on this but just that's on cardsy just so everybody knows okay and for the record i'm i'm apologizing to rask in, in advance because like i know the editing is tough and like he's the busiest guy i've ever met in my life so but in my defense i live out in the middle of a ski hill in barry where there gets a lot of snow and very little service. So this is what we're battling with. I mean, next pod, if it gets bad throughout the winter, I could be recording live from like a Tim Hortons or something in the city. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on an in-person <clears throat> podcast, I think, um, when I come, come to Barry soon. And you come here right before that. So uh, that, I'm just looking up at the schedule there. So that, that's pretty cool. It's um, November 29th at 3 o'clock, a seminar ran by Rask. I saw it written on the board the other day. So it said like Gavin, uh, Hockey Wealth Management, like seminar, 3 o'clock, November 29th. I was like, oh, Rask is coming to town. So then you text me like a few hours later and you're like, yeah, we're coming. Um, so yeah, it'd be awesome. Like if whether you come back to my billets and we do it or something like that, but like that would be cool. And and uh, um, it'd be our first, so I I'd I'd really enjoy that. Yeah, I think it'll especially with some internet stuff like today, like it'll just flow so easy, and and we just chop it up. Like I think it'd be pretty fun. Um, but even just like back to Barry stuff before we move forward again, like I just want to ask you since especially because we have no guests by the way, if you haven't been able to tell by now, but you can tell in the title as always. Um, but <laughs> so I'm kind of like interviewing cards a little bit here, but so overall, like we know. It's a contract year for Cardsy. All the listeners know I talk about it all the time how, you know, um, we want you to sign with San Jose. And you're off personally to a good start. But how do you balance, like, you're not having team success. You're having personal success. Like, what's going on mentally for you? Like, how do you – what are you focusing on? What are you thinking about? Like, how, like, can you just talk about that? Yeah, I think I learned, like, a lot. And I always go back to it, too, when I talk to my teammates about, like, like if a younger guy asked me how to get better. And I, I think I've learned so much from just being at San Jose camp and like with San Jose and the AHL team there for so long and, you know, being on a winning team when I was 16 in this league and stuff. And I've learned so much from like older guys. And that's the biggest thing for me is like what I've taken away from all these players is they just worry about getting better each day. So whether it be I can improve my shot in – the littlest margin or learn something that I didn't know the day before, even if it's on video, if I pick something up on, on some other player on another team that I can use any sort of advantage that I can gain my bed at night saying, okay, I'm a little bit better than I was like when I started my day, 
is what I wanted to achieve, uh, not achieve, achieve as a hockey player. So, I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. Um, no matter what's going on in life, any facet, like whether, whether it be at home, at the rink, kind of anywhere, you kind of just got to focus on better, bettering yourself. As you know, too, like in, in school, you got to get better each day or else you're going to get past. But yeah, like it's definitely difficult. You want to be a leader too and you want to kind of set an example. So that's like what I try to do is I just try to give my best effort each day and set an example for for everybody. Um, and I want I want to set the tone and I want other guys to try to one up my tone so then the team can push to another level. Do you know what I mean in, in a sense? Like I feel like if, if you want to do better than me, then I want to do better than you, then we're both going to excel to a different level. Yeah, we we just talked about this actually at Brock with a couple of guys about like you um you can push people can push other people to be better like especially um we talked about it with some of the guys who are in and out of the lineup if they're coming to practice working harder than anyone it it forces the guy in the lineup to work even harder to you know cuz you got to watch your watch your back when this guy's out working you right now so yeah. like, people honestly like you're on, when you're on a team like that people can push each other to be better and as a leader like you said like you have to set that tone and 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 show people like you want to be out on the ice later than them and you want to be the hardest working in the gym and stuff. I keep hearing all these good things about you in the gym, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I, I try. I get in there. Like, and that's another thing. I was just gonna mention that. Like, I have good competition in the summer. Like guys who I work out with who they throw a plate on. I want to throw another plate on. Like it's like that. You want to push pace in the gym. And it's like the same thing in practice. If a guy gives you a bump, you get up and you give him a bump and you, you continue to go. And it's, it's the way to get better. And like, that's, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, but yeah, I mean, I, I try to get in the gym when I can. Why? Who's telling you this? I just got inside sources, man. I don't know. It's a secret. Anyway. Yeah. So uh... by the way, by the way, we're both battling a little bit of coughs. If you can't hear it in our voice, I know you're coughing a lot. I'm, I'm coughing too. I feel like, there's so much dry air and i'm just like i don't know my it's the winter cold. man it's just it, Brutal. And it just makes me sad and it's so dark out so early it actually rattles me hey we're we, like i got home today and it's like it's like four o'clock it's dark out i'm like man like what yeah it's brutal the time change like it's not something that that annoys me and uh it just makes everyone more sad too like when you're just tired and it's dark and you feel like nine o'clock comes by and you feel like it should be midnight because it's been dark all for the last seven hours. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, it doesn't even, it's seven 30 right now as we record this, but if I'm, I'm tired, like I'm just not happy. No, I'm kidding. I'm happy to be here, but the weather and, and stuff makes me sad. That's the same thing with me, man. I'm going on here. I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm getting ready to go to bed. And I'm like, Oh no, it's seven 30. I'm like, how is this making any sort of sense right now? It's brutal. But we're getting past it, you know. You got to be positive, as Coach Chip would say. Feel the flow. <laughs> yeah, Coach Chip. Um, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll, I could talk about uh, the Thunder Bay trip with Brock. We're also gonna get into some NHL stuff, some OHL stuff, some fan questions. We got we got some good stuff coming, but I'll just quickly touch on on this past weekend with Brock. We we had the we had the road trip in Thunder Bay to play Lakehead twice. We flew there and flew back. I did want to say, well, I, I guess I'll get to it after. The flight home was absolute madness, but we'll we'll get there. Um, it was uh, we we split the weekend one and one, which for us like we want to win every game, like we think we're a top team as we we are. So we're we weren't happy with that, but it's a pretty hostile environment to play in there at Lakehead, man. Like their fans are crazy, um, <laughs> like their their chirps were were crazy. Like I can't even repeat them on here. Like, actually, I want it, but it, they're, like, really offensive. I can't. But they were just, like, they were really, really clever. They're going at it with the scratches. One of our guys was in the washroom uh, at, like, 6 o'clock an hour before the – like, when the gates open. And he was in the washroom, the public one there. And uh, the fans are, like, chirping him, like, telling him he's nervous and stuff. Like, it, it was crazy. Um anyway that's a, actually that's actually the best though like i feel like because when that happens too and like like in barry and like are on the road especially like the gates open and the fans come flooding in and it's like are you gonna start ripping on me right now or like are you gonna be polite but like up there i guess they don't care hey eh? they're passionate fans you said they were they were crazy and the beers were flowing in the crowd they have like the beer garden there with super cheap beers and everyone's walking around like with stacks and i was like honestly pretty cool. it's, it's a super cool crowd um, it it was really fun there, but the, their fans are nuts, which is obviously like super. It's super fun. Um, but uh, then um, 
there was there was even like a line brawl at the end of the last game with seven seconds left. I don't know if did I send you the yeah, video? You sent me the TikTok, was it? Yeah. Yeah, that's funny, man. But it was like so tempers were getting heated and stuff, it, which makes it, it it was just fun. But then we got to do cool stuff in Thunder Bay. Like one of the things I wanted to talk about was actually like we went to see the Terry Fox monument and uh, we all learn about Terry Fox like here in Canada. I don't know about our American listeners, but I guess for those I'll enlighten those for you, for those who don't know. But Terry Fox, basically, he had cancer in his leg, lost his leg, um, had a prosthetic leg, and he wanted to raise money and awareness for like money for research. And so he did what's called the marathon of hope. He was going to run across Canada, like coast to coast with one leg, a marathon every day, 26 miles every day. And he did it all the way from the Pacific ocean until Thunder Bay when the cancer ended up spreading to his lungs and he wasn't able to do it anymore. But this guy every day, day after day, after day, after day, after day, ran a marathon, which is absurd. Like, and not only is that hard enough as it is running a marathon every single day, he had one leg one leg like it's honestly and the prosthetics were not what they what they are now yeah and might i add the fact that like i'm I'm pretty sure he was like sleeping in a van most nights and stuff like at the start i'm I'm sure he didn't have the funds to be in like hotels and stuff like that and like we want to talk about getting better each day that guy is an absolute inspiration to like all of canada and we always talk about like greatest athletes and stuff like that he has to be like number one for just like his story his perseverance everything and like he doesn't get enough credit. I know. I was when I was reading this monument, and I'm just thinking, like, dude, a, a marathon runner wouldn't even run a marathon and then run another one the next day. Like, your your body needs to rest. This guy no rest, just day after day for so long. So anyway, that was pretty cool. But then, yeah, I want the flight home. <laughs> First of all, the flight in was like the most turbulent flight. We're on these like fifty person airplanes, right? Um, they're pretty small propeller planes and stuff with our bags weighing them down and it was just super turbulent flying through like freezing rain. But then on the way, on the way back, the flight's as smooth as it can be until the last minute. And we're, we're landing at the the Toronto Island airport there. So like, as we're coming in, all you see is water under you. So there's no land. Yeah. We're like a hundred feet above the water. <laughs> and sure enough, like I'm going to do a visual for those watching, like, so you can see, but if you're listening, like I'll try to explain it. Um, so we're going in horizontally as you normally do. Thanks to, you know, the plane banks right, like as hard as you can bank. <laughs> and and then it immediately corrects itself. And I was like, okay, we're like 100 feet above the ground. Like we had time to recover. Like we're fine. We're still descending. One more time. Hard bank right. We're like 50 feet above the ground. I'm like, and, and the pilot warned us that there was like heavy winds and stuff. And we're in these tiny propeller planes. I was like, <laughs> holy crap. So next thing you know, people are getting a little scared. Like, how are you with flying? I, I'm good with flying. Uh, but like I, I was getting a little nervous here. Like I've never had a problem flying with this one. I guess I'm a little more scared on these small, like small propeller planes and stuff. Yeah. But, well, you're paying 54 bucks for a ticket. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah. And, and so anyway, so, so then this, that's the second bank, right? We're like 50 above. And then I'm like, okay, next thing you know, we're like 10 feet above. All you see is water underneath because like at this airport on the Island airport is literally like the second the land comes is the yeah. edge of the runway. So we're 10 feet above the ground, hard bank right. One more time. Everyone starts freaking out now because we are so we are about to land. And then he <laughs> it immediately corrects and he touches down like right as it corrects. It was just like, and we were fine. The landing was honestly fine that part, but everyone was freaking out the last minute of this flight. It was and, crazy. Man, that's nuts. And and I always wonder too, like pilots, like they seem so calm and collected, and you only see it in movies. Like you don't see them up there, what they're doing. And like like, do you think they're freaking out when the plane's just teeter tottering right above a land mass, like a big pool of water, and you got to land in there without, like, oh man, like those guys got to have some serious stones on them? I think this guy was freaking out. And, and one of our players, like, chirped him a little bit, saying, like, the flight was smooth until he grabbed the wheel and took off the autopilot. <laughs> Poor guy, man. Anyway, so I also I just want to jump in right now. For the listener and explain we're now switching cardsy to an on the phone interview or discussion so uh cardsy say hi hey i'm here via phone call now so things went a little haywire but uh you know what we get an episode out for the people so we got to do what we got to do right exactly um anyway so yeah i did want to say also what we we're talking about last week and stuff before thunder bay i ended up going to the buffalo sabers game where they they played arizona and Arizona actually won, but uh, 
Tage Thompson up close and personal. Like I was 15 rows back. He's so big. He's a freak and he's so nasty. He was, it was cool to see him in person. Yeah. And that's a guy who's like been pro- progressing in the league over the past few years and he's emerged as like a superstar. But like, I feel like he can only continue to improve. And especially as that Buffalo team continues to get better themselves, he's going to get better as a player. Yeah. Yeah. And at first, like when he signed that big contract, people were like, he hasn't proved himself. But man, it, it looks like it'll be a pretty good signing for Buffalo. And they have the cap to do it. So who cares? Um, I want to jump in. I said we were going to come back to Manscaped and when we talk about men's health. And uh, I just want to say that this holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in Below the Waist Grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and using code SHOWBOUND for free shipping and 20% off. Think your holiday spread is good? It's time to give thanks to the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Think of it as a cornucopia for your balls. Big word right there. Their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It also gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave, plus it's waterproof. And we know what happened when it's not waterproof. If you refer back to a couple episodes, that's what happened to me there. But Manscaped is waterproof, so don't worry about that. And the Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker to chop your worst weeds up top in your nose and ears. This nose and ears hair trimmer uses a 9000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual-blade system to provide proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Can't forget the Manscapes liquid formulations. Everyone's favorite, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Toner Spray are like the pumpkin pie and ice cream after Thanksgiving dinner. Can't live without it. Your balls will be living in turkey heaven with these formulations. As if this wasn't enough, it's time to do the dishes with Manscapes shower products. Lather some of Manscaped's refined body wash on their brand new signature body buffer and give yourself the lather and rinse your body deserves. Lose the loofah and exfoliate your mates. No hygiene routine is complete without Manscaped's signature deodorant as well. A couple swipes of this and you'll be feeling oh so crisp. Gifting Manscaped is the ultimate hack to become the family favorite. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOWBOUND at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with, co- with free shipping at manscaped.com using code SHOWBOUND. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Yeah, shout out Manscaped. Everyone loves Manscaped and their clever, clever ads and marketing, but we love Manscaped the most. So Manscaped, Showman promo code. Um, we got to talk about some OHL stuff cards. So uh, it's it's in the news. It's no secret that Niagara Ice Dogs fired their coach um, and hired a new one. So uh pretty uh quick for a new coach like pretty short leash he was on obviously and the ice dogs have haven't been off to a great start this season so i mean obviously they're hoping to turn that around like um do you have any thoughts on that yeah like i mean it's it's a tough thing right like they they made the most trades by far of any team that i've seen since i've been in the league this year and this off season and you know, at the start of this year so it's tough to gel with players. I think you got to kind of find a groove with some players and play with them for a while before you find success. So I think uh, definitely they they have all the uh, all the tools. Like I feel like they got a bunch of great players and individuals there who, who I know personally and stuff. And I think uh, yeah, it's definitely it's a business at the end of the day though. If you're not if you're not producing and we see it at all levels, kind of things kind of come down from the top, you know. Yeah, exactly. And then a couple big trades too. We got first one, we'll go Brennan Offman to Peterborough, a former guest of the podcast and one of the best players in the entire CHL. So um, what do you think about that one? And Peterborough obviously loading up and going for it. Yeah, definitely a prolific goal scorer. And, you know, Peterborough already had a pretty good roster there to start with. So to add him um, is a boost to their even already high powered offense. So I'm 
glad to see he'll he'll get to go on a run. Obviously, a former guest of the podcast, so a uh, a friend of ours and a friend of the show. So wishing him all the best there. And then Guriev goes the other way, a player who is definitely one of the biggest, I guess, enforcers in in the OHL now in Flint. Yeah. So that's uh that's good. He he's a good player. I watched him in the playoffs last year against Hamilton. I remember seeing him and uh, Arbor Jack. I maybe future guests of the podcast going going at it. Um, another former guest of the pod, Josh Bloom, is on the move. So Saginaw trades their captain, and uh, he's going to North Bay. So what do you what do you make of that one? Yeah, it seems like uh, Eastern Conference teams are. <laughs> they're making moves as, as we see Peterborough and now like North Bay, but yeah, Bloomer, another former guest of the pod. Every all the former guests of the pod are coming to the Eastern Conference just so they can see me more. But uh, so uh, he he's an incredible player. So I think that's a great pickup for North Bay. Obviously, I'm not gonna like playing him that much because um, he's a great player in his own right. But uh, it'll be good to see him more often, and hopefully uh, we get the better of him more often, so I can uh, I can be chirping him out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, another one I wanted to mention, I don't know if you saw this, I'm sure you did, but the Hamilton Bulldogs are going to be out of their arena for the next two years. Did you see that? I did see that. And, you know, the first kind of question that comes to my mind is where, where are they going to play? And you're more of a logistics and business guy than I am. So I'm sure you've thought about this in depth. Yeah, I thought about it a bit, actually. You're, you're right. Uh, you're yeah. right with your pre-scout on me there. Um, I, I, I think, like, so logically, I was like, okay, they need to be in an OHL-type rink. And the closest one, as far as I know, that's unused is is uh, the one in Brampton, where the Brampton Battalion used to play, where the Brampton Beast and the ECHL most recently played until, until COVID. Now, I know the owner said that he wants to do right by the Hamilton community and allow the Hamilton fans to have ease of access, which means... I don't think he wants them to go as far as Brampton. Um, and then I was thinking, like, could could he could Hamilton share an arena? And if so, like, I'm thinking Niagara, the Meridian Center, it's like 40 minutes or less away, depending on how fast you are from Hamilton. Um, maybe you know they they I think they could make the dressing room space work. Like, could it be possible that they? They just go down the QEW and and chair rink with the ice dogs. I I don't know about that, but that was another thought that I had. Like other than that, you're sacrificing rink um quality to stay in Hamilton, as far as I'm concerned. Like there's no other OHL type rinks nearby, so you're losing you know amount of fans, suites, a jumbotron, probably dressing room facilities. Like, and and I don't know if that's something they want to do. So the first thought in my head was Brampton. That's kind of what I'm thinking, and then potentially sharing the Meridian Center is the next thought yeah like i mean there's so many like so much to figure out there and hamilton's owner uh will be super busy with that and on another note hamilton's owner michael anlauer and oshawa general's owner rocco tulio father of former guest of the pod ty tulio have formed a partnership that i've read today that they're going to bid to buy the ottawa senators so we could be seeing them or ryan reynolds as there's some some talks of him as well. Yeah, so funny you say that, and we talked about the Gavin guys at the beginning of the show, but immediately when the Senators went to say, uh, announce they were going to sell, like I, I'm texting with the Gavin guys. Sure enough, Justin, who you know, texts me back. He's like, I think it's going to be Ann Lauer or Tulio, who's the Hamilton owner and the Austro owner. He's a, and, and next thing you know, they're coming together. So he's spot on, like, immediate. This was, like, when the news broke of the sale. Like, these guys are tapped in. Um, That's wild. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, but that that would be pretty sweet, man. And then uh, we'd have to get yeah, them well, maybe, on the maybe podcast. He moved, uh, maybe he moved Hamilton to Ottawa for the two years and they play out of there. But, you know, I, feel, I, I really do feel for the fans and the Bill of Families and all the kids who kind of come out and watch the Bulldogs. It'll be tough if they have to move um, out of their town and stuff like that. And, and for the players who have gotten comfortable there, it's, it's definitely tough. And they, they've brought so much to the city over the past – few years especially with two championships in four years there so definitely upsetting for them the players the fans and everything like that but hopefully they land on their feet and it goes uh, it goes smoothly yeah and then i also think like that oakville arena where the uh junior a team in oakville plays like it's not necessarily an ohl rink but like it's a possibility 
um, if they go to Oakville, maybe like it's not that far from Hamilton. So I could see that as my other, as my other idea. Now, moving on, we had, we had an interesting fan question and we'll talk about it now. Cause I think it's a good little debate we can get into, but so in the Jacksonville Iceman, the ECHL team, their dressing room, there's a, a little debate going on right now. And that is what league is better, the NCAA or the CHL? So um, let's let's get into this. I think this is a great topic. And there's so many ideas like and, and debates, arguments for both sides. Like, do you want to start or, or what do you think? I mean, this is like such a, uh, and we, like, I always get chirped for it at camp. And like, I know the guys in the NHL, like this, this always happens. But like, um, they always say like the NHL guys, like the college guys always say like, the, the, especially the OHL guys, they, they, it's like a cult. They, they like just form like all, all their opinions are like OHL is the number one. And, you know, we have arguments about the Q and the W and we always stand up for our league. And, and I'm going to go ahead and stand up with the CHL here and I'll say, yes, it's, in my opinion, I do believe it's the superior league, and, but you do have to look at there, there's so many. There, it's so different, man. Like it, it's just so different. Like you have freshmen in college and in the in the NCAA who are older than overagers in the OHL. You know, so you, you can't you can't. It's so hard to draw a compar- a comparison. You know. So what about level of play aside? What about better league in terms of um things like things like games played the facilities fans like things like that aside from the level like which one is better to play in like i think like i think like crowds are like pretty similar like i i know like most of their ranks are kind of like modeled like ohl ranks you know like five thousand or less like typically like six thousand i don't know but like obviously their fan bases are a little bit different like ours are like the pride of the hockey community in, in your town or city and the kids coming up and stuff like that, whereas college is, is all the students uh, on campus. So you get a different vibe at each, um, for sure. And then, yeah, facilities, obviously universities have more fun maybe from their football team or stuff like that. But then at the same time, the OHL has these NHL-like facilities and treat us like like the pros that they want us to become. So I think, I, I think both sides are good development, but uh, you know which side I'm leaning to. And I, and I think you'd lean that way too. Yeah. I, I, I'd lean towards the CHL and, and this is what you say, like in my head right now, the arguments like even based on what you've said, because I do think a lot of NCAA facilities are better than, than CHL. Cause there's a lot of like older rinks. Cause I'm not just thinking OHL too. Like there's a lot of in the CHL, in general and, and in the NCAA they're not all these brand new facilities either so that that's another thing but what puts it over the top for me for the CHL is that you're playing 68 games you're you're essentially like if you're training to become an NHL player and you're playing an almost an NHL season and you're not in the NCAA and I think that's the big difference maker I I also think the stats speak for themselves the the CHL like number one development league in the world forever and I might even throw in a little jab. I think the OHL is number one too. So that's yeah, it is. Three, so. <laughs> so for all of my buddies in the dub and the queue listening, just know that. <laughs> yeah, that's what they get for being born in a different place. Um, yeah, <laughs> but but no, you're right about that, and the and the stats do speak for themselves. But definitely, um, definitely a good debate to have. So I'm actually, I'd like the listeners to maybe let us know in the comments or in the DMs if you have any opinions or, or an argument to make, and if it's a, a worthy argument, then I'll, I'll bring it up on next week's episode. But um, moving into some NHL stuff, talking about Buffalo, where I, I was at Jack Eichel gets the hat trick in Buffalo, sticking it to them as a member of the Vegas golden Knights. Did you see this crazy? And I've been a Jack Eichel guy. Like I, I I've liked his game. I thought he was like super cool. Um, as a player and like as a guy like coming up when he got drafted and stuff but like i i've been a fan of his play and everything like that so i thought i and and it's hard for us to make a comment right because like we don't know what actually went down there but for for like the reception that he's been given in like coming back to buffalo i think it's pretty good like nice for him you know yeah i think Honestly, you know it was going to be an emotional game. He's probably putting some money on the board and 
and uh he really wants to you know put show the fans like what what they're missing because like they're booing him like crazy he gave a lot of time years of his life into that organization and i don't think i don't think i'm not going to speak for him but i don't think that he feels he was treated the right way on the way out if i had to guess i'm not speaking for him but that's the way i take it and for him to be able to go and get a hat trick, like I honestly, it must have felt so good for him. So, and also the fact he missed two breakaways before he scored a hat trick. The guy literally could have had five or six goals that night. Yeah, and uh, and a big win, and a big win for Logan Thompson and Net that night, who's been a, a stud um, all year long and pride of Brock Your University Vesna hockey. Prediction. Vesna and rookie of the year prediction. Um, so that's looking good for me right now. He's he's buzzing and Vegas is buzzing. Um. Mm-hmm. A fun little prediction I wanted to do. We had the Hockey Hall of Fame uh, inductions last week, this, this past week. And I want to know if we can make a prediction or predictions right now for guests that we've had on the podcast that could end up in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Well, man, like that's the thing. Like we try to get on talent each week. But like, and these are all kids. Like we've interviewed so many guys who have like just started their careers and coming into it. Like I feel like everyone has that feeling for like hockey hall of fame potential like you don't you never see like a guy's draft like rating like where he was drafted on his hockey hall of fame induction you know yeah so like i feel like at this age it's, it's not about where you're picked or who you are uh or sorry like then it's not about that but like right now everybody's like oh my god like first rounder second rounder this and that but at the end of the day, like I feel like all of the players that we've talked to and stuff have that feeling and that potential to make it, but I know you have someone in mind. I, I'm just thinking through the list. Like, There's a couple of people I have in mind, and, and like I said, it could be anyone because you don't know how their careers are going to go in 10, 15 years, who's going to be playing for that long, winning cups, like winning gold medals, whatever it might be. But first pick for me right now, which is kind of like the easier one off the bat, is – Alex Newhook because one he already has a cup and at the end of the day like cups affect um your hockey hall of fame resume um and who knows if he might get a second one this year with Colorado so that plus being from Newfoundland a place where there's really not many people to ever make the NHL from there like he could do a lot of stuff for the growth of the game which matters like if he goes on and plays a thousand games wins two cups a gold medal for Canada like whatever it might be he, I, I could see him being a Hall of Famer. And there's a lot of other guys that came to my mind immediately, like Byfield, Perfetti. Um, like there's so, there's so many, honestly, that we've had on. But those those guys guys did come to mind first as well. But I, I think I'm gonna go if I had to pick one right now. I think it would be New Hook. What do you think of that? I I really like that pick and the reasoning you gave to back it up too. Um, very strong argument for it at the very young age of only like what is he like 21? Yeah, he's 21. So. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say I hope everybody who comes on here <laughs> makes it to the Hockey Hall of Fame and, and good things come to those who come on the Showbound podcast as we know so hopefully that is in the future you know yeah I think everyone's probably going to go to the Hall of Fame that's been on our podcast it, it, it pretty likely um, like first will be you probably yeah me as first a, as a builder as a builder builder of, of hockey podcasts <laughs> I don't know <laughs> we'll We'll see about that one, but but uh, I like that pick. Um, let's get into some this or that. Now, okay, I wrote Fair. a list. So yeah, I have, I have the list as well. So I do like I do one and you do one. Okay, so, or we let's 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 both answer for each. I think. Okay, so first one half forward or backwards? I'm going half backwards. What about you? Uh. But yeah, not backwards unless we're golfing. Yeah, agreed. Um, voice call or FaceTime? Um, it depends who it is, but I like to be traditional and put the phone up to my ear. It gives me like some sort of satisfaction. I don't know. Yeah, I, I also it depends who it is. Um, I I think I'm gonna go FaceTime. I I like if someone just randomly FaceTimes that that it's like one of my buddies. Like I don't know, it's weird if you don't really know them that well. So I guess. Yeah. Depends who it is. Um, we can't sleep on the trusty phone call because that's what's getting us through this podcast right now. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, breakfast or dinner? Uh, 
you know what? I'm going to go breakfast because I'm a better breakfast cook and I can make it myself. I can clean up after myself for that. So therefore for the other people surrounding me in my life, they really appreciate it. And you know what? I absolutely love like a breakfast bowl with eggs, bacon, potatoes, um, a little bit of cheese, some onions, and then like top it off with like maybe a little bit of barbecue sauce or hot sauce. Like that's dialed for me. But like also at the same time, if you throw a steak in front of me, I'm not going to complain. So <laughs> I'll go breakfast for the for the people I'm surrounded by in my life. But uh, what do you got? Yeah, I'll go breakfast. I also I agree with the the steak thing. I I love a good steak, but I always could eat breakfast. I need it every day. And I'm the type of guy, like if I go to McDonald's at 11 PM, like I'm getting a breakfast sandwich from there. Like I, I love breakfast. Mm-hmm. All right. McDonald's or Tim? Yeah. Speaking of that, speaking um, of. <laughs> I, I guess I just gave away my answer. I'm, I'm going McDonald's on this one. And, and only because, well, there's a couple of reasons. This is, this is a rant for another podcast. I think I, I've probably gone into this one with you, but Tim's will always find a way to screw up my order no matter what. And if they don't screw it up, they just won't put my lid on properly. So it leaks on my hand. So McDonald's. <laughs> That's actually, yeah, you always complain about that to me. You'll be like, oh yeah, Tim's F, F this up. They F that up all the time. So I, I get where you're coming from there. I like to try to keep the diet clean. So I'd say just the Tim's coffee and I keep it pretty simple so that they can't really screw it up. Yeah. I, I get the breakfast sandwich and coffee from Tim's a lot just because there's there's a Tim's closer to the, than me than the McDonald's. And also the, it's cheaper from Tim's too. I'll give them that. But the quality of the breakfast sandwich, I'm going McDonald's big time. It's better. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going McDonald's. But I don't really get any of the food there like from either. Just just the breakfast sandwiches. Okay. Cash or credit? I'm going to go cash. I love the feeling of having cash. Obviously, the whole world's kind of going Apple Pay, credit cards, debit cards, whatever. But I do love cash. You? I'm credit. I hate having cash on me because then I spend it, and yeah, if it's, I if I don't have it on me, I'm probably spending less money. So I, I'm definitely going credit. Smart. This kind of plays into the next one too. Night in or night out? <laughs> uh I I'd say now night in because of how busy I am. Like I sometimes just don't. Want, I just don't really want to go out as much as I used to. But but I'm definitely good for a night out every every now and then. But I can't I can't do it as much as I used to. I feel like we're on the same page there, kind of. Um, like, obviously love a night out with the boys, hanging out, whatever, doing whatever you want to do. But, like, a night in sometimes just to, like, relax, watch a football game or watch a movie and kind of just, like, go to bed on your own accord is pretty nice. Yeah, okay. So we're the same one on that one. How about listen to music or listen to a podcast? I'm going to say, like, if I'm going on, like, a long drive, I want to listen to a podcast because it eats up more time. But, like, if I'm just going on, like, a 15, 20, even, like, anything under an hour, really, I'll just listen to music unless, obviously, there's a showbound episode. <laughs> yeah. Other than showbound, I'm, I'm the same. Like, yeah, if it's a long drive, I'll probably put on a couple episodes of showbound. Um, <laughs> it sounds so weird to say that. I'll, obviously, I'm not, like, sitting there listening to our own podcast, but... <laughs> But uh, yeah, shorter drives, like definitely listen to music. I think, yeah, I haven't been listening to too many podcasts lately, but just because I haven't really had any long drives, really. Like my drive to the rink is like four minutes each way. So I've just been throwing on whatever's on the radio even. And yeah, so I'll go music for now. Um, pizza or sushi? Uh, sushi. Oh, yeah. You, you know my answer for this one, I think. Sushi. Yeah, I'm always eating sushi, man. I love sushi. Oh, yeah. Winter or summer? Oh, this is a tough one because winter is hockey season. But, like, and, and uh, I like my winter style with, like, my coats and stuff. But but uh, I'm going to go summer because who doesn't love summer? I'm going to go summer, too. And I got to play well so I can have summer and hockey season at the same time in California. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a cheat code for you. That's not fair. I'm going to be moving there. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll come down to San Jose. I'll, I'll cook for you and, and your boys and clean. You give me free rent because that's an expensive city to live in and uh, season tickets to the San Jose Sharks and then we'll call it a deal. Okay, yeah, that's a good deal. Okay, Easy. sweet. Easy money. Last <laughs> but not least, fruit or veggies and I'm going to go ahead and say undoubtedly fruit. Yeah, fruit for sure. But actually when uh, 
when we were in Thunder Bay on the weekend, we got like we had fruit platters and veggie platters for the boys and stuff just kicking around and and the veggie platters were getting devoured actually as well as the fruit, but it was pretty even for for our team, but for me personally fruit for sure. Mm-hmm. Um we'll go into some fan questions I think. So uh we can kind of wrap it up. We got a couple here. The first one is do you guys watch Formula 1? Car, do you watch Formula 1? I do not. Okay. I I don't watch Formula One, but I actually follow it. Um, like I, I don't really watch the races just because the timing of them. Um, but I, I check who's winning and I follow Formula One on Instagram and I see, like I, I keep in touch. I follow, I follow the Formula One. Um, oh, I know. Like I just know like the top guys, like the, the Hamilton and um, probably Verstappen. Uh, Verstappen, <laughs> yeah. and like yeah. Those guys. Yeah. I watch I watch the Netflix show too. So like yeah. if that counts. Um but I don't really watch the races. Uh Cardi, if you couldn't be a pro athlete at any sport, so that means golf, what would you want to do? Um hockey or maybe golf. Be a lawyer. I think that was something I always kinda had in mind. Um growing up as a kid, like if, if sports didn't work out, um, that would be something I would want to do. A lot of schooling, mind you. So I'd have to battle through that, but it's definitely something I could see myself loving doing. Okay, that that's a good answer. I actually like that for you, and I I can see that for you based on your um, um, like involvement with advertising and partnerships and stuff and and business like with the podcast. Mm-hmm. So I can see that for you. Um, what's your favorite type of food? I don't know if I know this about you. Like, what do you, what do we mean type? Like Chinese, Mexican, Italian, like American, like that sort of stuff. I guess, like, like honestly, yeah. What would like what would sushi fall under? Japanese. Japanese, yeah. Then then let's go Japanese because like I, I absolutely love sushi. I think I, I'm gonna make a cheat answer and I'm gonna go Asian, like encompassing all types of Asian cuisine. That's kind okay, of okay. Well then, yeah, you go there. my answer as well. Yeah, uh, we've talked about this one in the past, but it's been a while. So, what's something you hate paying for? Gas. Yeah, my gas. answer will never change. Yeah, I wonder if I can get creative here on the spot something else like, it's so frustrating yeah it is and I've, i i was always i'm always the guy who uh like when my car gets to half a tank or just below like i'm filling it up like i'm I'm that guy who's, who's responsible with it but now it, it, it'll get pretty low and i'm like i'll, I'll fill it up when the price goes down <laughs> and like i'm just waiting and yeah. waiting <laughs> oh yeah man it's, it's absurd so you gotta you gotta get it when it's hot yeah um anything else off the top of my head like I, it, that gas is definitely the number one. I think uh, that's, yeah, that's probably it. Um, how do you move up or how to move up the lineup in junior hockey? What do you got? I can, I'll, you give the player's perspective. I'll give a coaching side perspective. I think a huge thing is being positive. Like if a coach sees you being negative and like being down on yourself, like because you're lower in the lineup, he'll, he'll say, you know what? That's like not a competitive guy, not a guy I want to move up the lineup. And, and like if you're not playing a lot or you're out of the lineup, you have to be a difference maker. And we, we mentioned a bunch about it in practice, like at the, at the start of our talk here today. And we just said, go out, work every single person every day and give a coach no reason to like not give you a shot. And, and when you get in there, like don't be afraid of the opportunity. Kind of seize the moment and do what you do. You're being put in that role for a reason. So when you're given an opportunity, just be confident in yourself and know what you're doing. Like yeah. you know what you're doing is like good and like that's what got you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's well said. I think for sure if you're playing lower in the lineup, then you're right. Or if you're in and out of the lineup, even like you, you need to be a good teammate because that stuff gets noticed. And if you're not, like your teammates aren't even going to want you to be in the lineup. So you got to be positive. You got to push the pace. You you have to be like that guy who stays out till the end of practice. Like you want to be the first one. You want you want to get noticed as being a hard worker to to hopefully. You know, the coaches, he's like, you know, what? let's give this guy the chance when they're picking. Like if a guy goes down and they're like picking between two people, you've now put yourself in that position to be the guy to go up. And then when you do, it's important. You have to have the cardio to keep up with like bigger, bigger playing time. Because I've seen it go where, um, you know, you're a fourth line guy. Now you're on the second and you can't keep up with the pace like that for the, the entire game. So you need to make sure your cardio is good enough to actually play that many minutes to stay in that spot. Um, but a big thing is, yeah, like you want to like actually show you're the hardest working guy on that team. Like, don't get outworked. Be the first one on the ice. Be the last one to leave. Be a good teammate. Do do the little things like that. And uh, if you can score, that'll help. Like, 
if you're on yeah. if you're on the fourth yeah. line and you want to move up like if you can get a couple goals like that that'll help i know it's not that easy to do but that that is definitely gonna help and actually the next question is how to break a scoring slump i i just i just realized that cards what do you got for that one well the easy answer how to break a scoring slump is move up the lineup because that means <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're move you moved down the lineup and now you're in a slump. So so how do you what do you do? Yeah. Honestly, man, it's it all goes back to confidence and like just like trusting like I'm a I'm a believer in hockey gods and all that stuff like that. So I, I think like just stay to the process, don't do anything different. Like if you have ten goals in a row in ten games, why would you change something? Even if you have ten goals in ten games, like there's nothing that you're going to do changing your cage. You just have to have your mindset right. Maybe that's the only thing I would change is your mindset. Say, okay, I'm going to score tonight. I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. Have positive talk through your head, not, oh, my God, I hope I score to break my like slump, you know? Like, think positively about it rather than thinking, I need to do this to get out of something. Yeah, no, you're right. And, uh, yeah, some guys change their routines up and do stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. Like, it's what's on the ice. So um, if you are if you are a goal scorer and you're in a slump, like, usually at some point people just snap out of it. Like, you know, you just get sometimes the bounces don't go your way. Like, there's no real answer. I know, like, some, yeah, like, Rochi, for example, went, like, one game without a point, which for him is, like, he's our guy. Like, so that's a long time. Or maybe it was two. And he, he changed up his routine and, and it started working again. So maybe it is like he, he became the first one at the rink. That's what he started doing for home games. So maybe maybe just come earlier and like give yourself a little more preparation time. Like that's something yeah, that's that what I do. think. Like I don't think you need to change how you're playing or anything like that. Obviously, if you're playing bad, figure that out because that's a problem with you and your coaches. But like in terms of like like preparation, like yeah, changing going to the rink. It's not changing anything. It's just changing your mindset tricking yourself into thinking that something different is going to change something for you, you know? Yeah. And then uh, what do coaches like to see for me? Um, it says, so, well, one thing is uh, I, I like this one and a lot of coaches like this. People don't know if you're getting scratched or like you're on the fourth line or whatever, and you think you're not in the coach's good books because it coaches like when you come in the room and ask to just have a conversation about it and you go in nice, like respectfully and you say, I want to know why I'm not in the lineup and what I can do to get in the lineup. Like they actually respect that and enjoy you coming in because it shows them, okay, this guy's like, he wants to get in. Like he actually wants to play instead of just sitting around pouting. Um, you have to do it the right way. Like you don't want to start going and yelling at your coach, but um, that's something coaches like. And if you want to talk about moving up the lineup, maybe you, you have that conversation with the coach and just be like, look, this is how I feel at where I am on this team obviously you don't feel the same way. Like what can I do for you to have that feeling for me? And then maybe you watch video with him. You learn, like you just don't know what the coach is seeing. And then he explains it. So things like that, like anything you want to say on that cardsy? Yeah, I totally agree. I think like, that's like one of the best courses to act. And like, we're all humans at the end of the day. So if you can go have a man to man conversation or a woman to woman conversation or whatever it may be, um, about your play, about what you need to do. I think giving a coach what they want is the number one thing that, that they look for. If, if they ask you to play a certain way and you don't do it, obviously you're not going to get results. So I think being on the same page with them, and that, that starts from a conversation. So I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, and then uh, to totally switch things up for our last fan question, uh, it says, what's the spiciest thing you've ever eaten? So we'll end on a lighter one. You got anything off the top of your head? I, I know I do for me. I ate a ghost pepper when I was like eight years old. Oh, how did that go for you? Oh, buddy, I was in Texas and like my my family and relatives from there, they, they like they like had one growing and I'm like, yeah, like whatever, I'll eat it. I was struggling milk for like an hour and a half, like patting my tongue with like a towel and stuff. It was ugly. I was sweating. But you know what? I barreled it down because I like spice a bit, but not that much. So you? Yeah, funny for me, it's also a ghost pepper. But for me, I, I don't oh, love I don't love spice. With I don't I don't love spice, man. And like mild. I'm a mild guy. Like medium is, is a little too much for me most of the time. I don't like it. So what happened was it was during like COVID lockdown times when everyone was at home and nothing was going on. 
and uh we had ordered uh chinese food into the house i guess and my brother put in a ghost pepper into my food without telling me but he he didn't as far as i know he didn't know it was a ghost pepper he thought it was just like some type of other spicy pepper and he was just gonna prank me but uh it was a ghost pepper in yeah, the end. I, know. I know and so i eat this thing and immediately i'm like face is red i'm crying right away like I thought I I can't I don't think I threw up, but I felt like I was gonna throw up forever. Um, it was it was awful, and I was so mad at him. And he's sitting there laughing because he at the time he didn't think it was a ghost pepper until he found like the package he got it from. Um, so he thought I was like just overreacting and stuff. But man, this thing was the worst thing I've ever had in my life. It was a nightmare. I can't believe people people can handle those things. It was awful. <laughs> That's absurd, man. I I give you credit for a guy. I guess. You have no, you had no choice, but he just absolutely screwed you, and you, you dealt with the hand you were given. Yeah, it was so, so that was that. But uh, anyway, I guess that reaches the end of uh this episode. Unless if there's like I have nothing else to say, and if you have nothing else to say, then you want to wrap it up, or if you do have more to say, then go ahead. But I'll I'll give you the floor. Here you go. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I have anything more to say. Like I think we've done um very well for having no guest and just kind of like going with the flow of this episode like i think it was a good one um and mind you the wi-fi problems the raft who's gonna have his hands full with the, la- the the first 20 minutes of it but the phone call went over well so i think that'll get a kick out of the fans too but uh no i i enjoyed this one it was just nice and to come on and talk and i know we talked a little bit before so to just kind of reset relax and just just shoot the shit yeah no it's nice it's always good talking to you cardsy and uh we're going to be back on schedule next week. We'll get, we'll get some guests lined up and keep working. But we'll, also I want to say, especially to the people still listening at the end, I always say this, but we appreciate you and you guys have allowed us to do episodes like this where we don't always have a guest. Cause at the end of the day, like this isn't our full-time job being a podcaster. So we're not always going to be able to get a guest every time and line up an interview and, and make it work for everybody. So the fact that you guys are here listening to these episodes, um, we appreciate that. And we we're thankful that, uh, you guys like these episodes too. So for those still listening at the very end, we appreciate you and we love you guys. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys next episode. Yeah, I think from us, like Raf just said, really appreciate all the support. And yeah, it is tough sometimes. Like I got a full slate. Raf is struggling, seventeen job. I got a full schedule, NHL like schedule, like Raf mentioned earlier as well. But. Uh, no weather report this week because it's getting dark, it's getting cold, and it's getting snowy. So if you like the snow, positive for you. But uh, for the rest of us, like me and Raz, uh, tough flooding. So from us, it's over and out.